And the Bible says in the book of Acts, around midnight, they began to worship the king. When they began to worship, the chains came off, the prison doors are open. When we worship the creator of the universe, he'll set the captives free. He'll take off the chains if we would just worship him. Give the Lord a big clap offering and worship Jesus, and praise and glory. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. The worship does a great job in leading us into worship. But I, but I, it, it's going to come to a, a place, and I hope it happens in my lifetime. I hope it happens in my lifetime that when we walk through these doors, the worship team is in the back getting ready, right? And before they even get out, there's a worship that hit this room already. I pray that happens in my lifetime. That someone walks through the door and says, pray! I praise him for what he did this week. I lift up the name of Jesus today. And the worship team just be in the back like, what is going on? You know, that's how it's going to be in heaven. It's not going to be a worship team leading us every five seconds. The Bible says the rocks cry out. Everything worships God in heaven. We don't have a choice. Give Jesus a clap offering, a praise, a glory. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to Jesus. We exalt your name on high. We worship you. How many would agree with me that God is good? I want the prison team, if you, everybody could remain standing just for two more minutes. Prison team, make your way to the front. God told me to anoint them. For two and a half years, the prisons have been on lockdown because of COVID. They just reopened the prisons for us to go inside again after two and a half years. There's a prison right now. I forgot the name of it. The one that's going to put TVs for us. What's the name of that prison? Corcoran. They have their geek squad. I call it geek squad. The guy that put the computers right for, for, for the place, right? They have their computer guys going out. Corcoran, as we speak, they're putting TVs around the whole prison. So not only when we're there, the worship hits and the word hits, when we're not there, TV screens spreading the gospel all throughout Corcoran prison. Their computer squad is putting in the computers right now. I want you to stretch your hands forward. The prison ministry, when they're going to be going to five or six prisons. They're going to be ministering to thousands of people every week. It happens to be one of our biggest ministries as far as winning souls. It's one of the biggest ones in the church. When they go to Tehachapi, that, that, that temple fits 400 guys. In a weekend, they'll reach 1,000. They'll reach 2,000 people in two days. Their goal is right now, they got five, six prisons that just opened up that we could go inside. We actually have ladies here right now at the ladies jail. Right now as we speak, they're ministering to the ladies. They want all these prisons full with us as workers. We're on any given day, we can minister to three, 4,000 people in prisons in one day. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands forward to the prison ministries. Start to pray for them. Pray for them. I'm going to anoint them. These doors are reopening in the prisons right now. We thank you for the opportunity to preach the gospel in these prisons. We thank you, Lord. We've waited two and a half years to get back into these prisons. And now you're reopening the doors so we can go back inside. Where the enemy is defeated. Where people get saved. Where people get baptized of the Holy Spirit. Where people, the demons come out of people in those prisons. We thank you. Anoint them. Release every door. Even as we talk about Arizona, we're going to Arizona prisons in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. Release the prisons. Release the workers. Release the laborers as we start to go back into these prisons in 2022 and 2023. We thank you. Give the Lord a big shout of praise this morning. 
You guys can be seated. May the Lord use you guys, all right? You guys can be seated. They're going to Pelican Bay next week. You guys can be, give your neighbor a high five as you're going down to your seat. Give somebody a high five. Tell somebody next to you, it's so good to see you today. Tell them, you look good today. There you go. Hey guys, can you look around? We got a packed out house. Look around. Give yourselves a round of applause for making it to the house of God. I'm so proud of you. You could have stayed asleep today, could have been at Denny's right now, in and out, and wherever else you're going to go. I don't want to make anybody hungry right now, but I, I thank you for putting God first this week. Give yourselves a round of applause. Wave to everybody watching online. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds watching online all across the United States and now really around the world. But I'm so excited to be with you guys. How many are here for the first time? You've never been to this church before. I just want to just say hi to you. All right. Give it up for our first time guests, our family. Your family, we love you. And we, we don't say that lightly. We say that with a lot of weight on it. It was our very first service. We're creeping up on, is it 19 years now? 19 years of ministry. Creeping up on it. And um, the very first service, I was doing the welcome. And I was looking out in the crowd. Our very first service out in 4th and Arrow, not 4th, not 4th and Arrowhead. On Sierra Way and 2nd Street at the Rudy Hernandez Center. And I was, when I was welcoming everybody, the Lord told me, these are all your family now. Tell them hi, family. And I'm like, huh? And that was the very first service we had. And I said, welcome to the family. You come once, you are now part of the family. Give it up to our new family members. We mean that. We want, we want to go life with you and have life with you, you guys. Uh, Pastor Marco, he's on vacation slash conference. He's at a conference in Hawaii. Um, he spoke this last Wednesday, and man, he did a phenomenal job. Uh, Pastor Jensen Franklin spoke right after. He didn't know Jensen Franklin was speaking after him. Pastor Jensen speaks all over the world, and they did a tag team, and the Lord was blessed. I tell you what, what happens here at the way don't happen all, all over the place. Can you give Pastor Marco a big shout? He might be watching us. He's in Hawaii right now at a conference. And also a little time with his family as well. But if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles ready. Turn with me to Romans um, chapter 13, verse 11. Romans chapter 13, <laughs> excuse me, verse 11. I was in my room the other day at around 11 o'clock at night getting ready for bed. I already had another word that I was going to speak on. I, already, I emailed it to the team here and I said, hey, let's get this word ready for Sunday. And then around 12 o'clock midnight, I couldn't sleep. How many have ever been up at night you just can't sleep? The Lord just, he's not done with us yet sometimes in the night. Or it's just bad burritos. You got heartburn, okay? I didn't have heartburn. I was sitting there. I said, God, I got my message. I just like this, I was in bed around 11, 1130. I said, God, I got my message. You want to change it, I'm all yours. That's a scary thing as a preacher to tell God to change you, right? A couple days before. He said, you're right, we're going to change it. So for about 11.30 to 1, God gave me what I'm going to give you right now. I want to talk to you for the time that I have. I think we need to be here for five hours, but I'll respect your time today. Because this is a topic that we need to get. We need to understand it. And we got to teach it to others. So real briefly, I'm going to talk about the end times, the last days. I entitled this, kind of a funny title in a sense. Here's the title, write it down. What in the world is going on? I can't watch the news more than 10 minutes. I, I, I go crazy. What in the world is going on? Gas prices, are they ever going to stop going up? Anybody got an eight-cylinder truck like me? Let me pray, Fat Lord, help them right now. Father God, it's $180 to fill up a tank right now. I can hardly fill up my trucks too much. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what in the world is going on? Gas stations in Washington, Washington State, are resetting their price boards to accommodate double digits in preparation for fuel prices potentially reaching $10 a gallon, reports by the New York 
they're readjusting the machines to be able to handle double digits to get ready if it does take place now or in the future because inflation is here inflation is part of the end times but don't panic look at your neighbor tell them don't panic and that's gonna be one of the points later i don't want to get ahead of myself how do i know inflation is going to take place in the last days well look at revelation 6 6 now these are the scriptures you want to write down if you're just looking at me and i write it down try to write it down somehow some way you got to explain to your co-worker right now what's about to happen if you got a child, you're going to have to explain to your child what's happening right now in the world, and especially in America right now. You're going to have to be able to tell your boss at home or your boss at work what is happening. Re Revelations chapter 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice from among the four living beings say, a loaf of bread. I'm going to say a loaf of bread. Or three loaves of barley. It's going to get to the point in the near future. I'm not going to say tomorrow because I don't want to scare everybody. <laughs> It's going to cost a day's pay. And don't waste time to olive oil and wine. Now, if I look at the math today, minimum wage is $15 an hour times eight hours. You work an eight-hour shift. Pretty soon, in the near future, a loaf of bread is going to cost $120. You're saying, man, this is a, 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 a loomy, gloomy peach. Nope. I'm preparing us for what's ahead. And not only am I preparing for what's ahead, I believe in these last days, we're going to see miracles like we've never seen miracles before. Can I get an amen? Look at your neighbor and tell them Jesus is about to show off in your life. What in the world is going on? We see an 18-year-old boy, teenager, walks into a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, full of hatred and anger, full of demons. He walks into the supermarket, kills 10 people, full of demons. The Bible says even the demons will walk among us in the very last days. What's that mean? That people will be full of demons in the last days like never before. They'll do gruesome acts like we've never, before, like we've never seen before. What in the world is going on? We, are, we see a 68-year-old man, a senior. He walks into a church in Santa Ana getting ready to kill a bunch of people. He only kills one. And I'm going to call him a hero because he jumped on this perpetrator. And he stopped a massive shooting that could have took place in a church right here in Santa Ana. A mom this week kills her three kids in Los Angeles. She gets her 16-year-old boy to help her. They might show some of the pictures of the kids behind me. Just within the 24 hours, we had another shooting in San Bernardino. Ten people shot, one dead. Just happened just 24 hours ago. The Bible talks in the last days. Increase in violence is going to happen. Matthew 24, 37. When the Son of Man returns... It will be like it was in Noah's day. Pastor, how was it in Noah's day? Look at Genesis 6, 11. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. We're coming up to an age where violence is on the increase. Perversion is on the increase. But I'm here to let you know, as Christians, as believers... We have an assignment to get done in the last days. How many want to be about your father's business in the last days? How many soldiers do we got in the house? How many sold out soldiers? Give Jesus a big shout of praise. How many would agree with me we're in the last days? I could go on for five hours. I could go through with you the book of Matthew, chapter 24, of all the things that are taking place. We see Ukraine being taken over by Russia. Pastor, is all that in Scripture? Yes, it's in Scripture. All these countries have to come in alignment. They have to come in alignment, getting ready for the battle of Armageddon, the very last battle. One of the next countries, China, is already hovering over Taiwan. That's going to be one of the next moves we're going to see. China will take over Taiwan. 
That's what caused the shooting in Los Angeles. There's already friction between Chinese and Taiwanese. That's why there was a shooting in Santa Ana because those two countries are already going at it. They're already thinking about each other. That's why these countries are coming to alignment. We see Finland and Sweden. They wanted to join NATO. Why? They want to be a part of the United States. They want that coverage. They don't want what happened in Ukraine to happen in their country. You guys, we're in the last days. There's no time to fall asleep. Look at your neighbor Tom. You better wake up. Tell the person behind you, wake up. Romans 13, 12. This is all the more urgent for you. This is all the more urgent for you to know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer now. It's nearer now. It's nearer now. Jesus is coming back. It's nearer now. Jesus is coming back. It's coming soon. We're so now. All these things that happen in America, all this chaos around the world, the dollar being, being, being just demolished right now in America. As we speak, the dollar is being demolished. What you and I, what, what are we supposed to do? I know what's going on, and I was studying there at 1 o'clock. I said, God, and I'm with all these scriptures. We're going to go to war. People are going to die. People are getting persecuted. I was like, I was like crying at 1 o'clock in the morning. I was writing this. I said, God, what's the good? What, 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 what are we supposed to do? He said, let me give you your assignment for the last days. How many want to know what our assignment is as Christians? Write this down, number one. So we're going to answer a question. What's our role? What's our response for the end times? Number one, don't panic and don't be surprised at what's happening. Someone say, don't panic. And why not be surprised? We already know. I know what's about to take place. Matthew 24, 6, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. Are we seeing that? But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. It's going to happen. A loaf of bread is going to cost $120 one day. It is going to happen. The word of God is not going to change for no man. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The word of God will be fulfilled. Scripture by scripture, line upon line, page by page, the scriptures will be fulfilled. We can't change the word. But we should not worry and fear like the unbelievers. We know all this is going to happen before the rapture of the church. God has warned us. He's preparing us. I have some good news. God has also promised the believers he will take care of his children during these times of famine and difficulty. How many believe that Jesus Christ has your back? Give Jesus a shout of praise. He has your back. Pastor, how I know Jesus is going to take care of me? Look at Psalms 33. I'm happy you asked. Pretty soon it's going to take a miracle just to buy a house. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hello. Where all my young adults are, 18 to 30. <laughs> They're going to need a miracle to buy a house, Lord. <laughs> how do I know that? It's 5.2 interest rates right now. Young adults, you don't even know what the interest rate is. I know. You just see a house, it's pretty. How much a payment on the house? 5.2. Yeah. You buy a $300,000 home, it's like 35, 4,000. Only two things got to happen. You got to be a millionaire. You got to play for the Lakers or something. Or walking in the favor of Jesus or walking in the favor of Jesus I rather walk in the favor of Jesus my income doesn't come from this world my joy doesn't come from this world it comes from the kingdom of heaven it comes from the kingdom of glory but he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory give Jesus a 20 second praise break Give Jesus a 20 second praise break. Jesus is going to get you through. Jesus is going to get you through. Jesus is about to show off in these last days. He's about to show off through you. 
people can't buy one house and, and you're buying a house and what, how'd you do that? Let me tell you about my God. How'd you get that job? He didn't go to college. Let me tell you about my God. How do you have joy and you're going through all kinds, the world is in chaos? Let me tell you about my God. Right? How do I know the Lord's going to take care of us? Look at this scripture, highlighted. Good scripture for the end times, how the Lord's going to take care of us. So don't panic. Don't be surprised. Psalms 33, 18. But the Lord, he watches over those who fear him. Anybody in the house fear God? He's got a tight eye on you. Now, let's reverse, rewind. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. Those who don't fear God, they don't have this promise that we're about to read. If you don't have Jesus today, you should be shivering out of your socks right now. Because if you don't know Jesus, this promise doesn't belong to you yet. In about 15 minutes, it will look, I'm going to get you saved. Those who fear him, the Lord watches over those who fear him. Those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death. Here it goes. He keeps them alive in the times of famine. He keeps them alive in a time of difficulty. He keeps them alive in the last days. He keeps them vibrant and passionate in the last days. He will provide in the middle of a famine. If he's got to send a raven, he'll send a raven. If he's got to send somebody to bless you, he's about to send somebody. The Lord will take care of us in the middle of a famine. Can I get an amen? I love it. Someone will say, thank you, Jesus. We put our hope. Look at verse 20. We put our hope in the Lord. My hope is not in this economy. My hope is not in the Babylonian systems of this world. Babylonian system. What you talking about, Pastor? Babylon in the word represents the structure, the systems of the world. We don't receive our blessings from the systems of this world. We got more people running to the stock market than I've ever seen in my life. Stock market is good. It's okay. But let me tell you something. If you're putting your trust in the stock market rather than God, hear me somebody, you're headed for a rude awakening. We don't put our trust in man. We don't put our trust in the systems of this world. I put my trust in Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, the God that won't let me down, the God who's with me, the God who protects me. My trust is in God. How many in this room, your trust is in God? Someone's telling oh, pastor, not tell me to play the stock market. You can play the stock market. But I tell you what, you're, you're putting 3,000 there. And you put five dollars here in the offering basket. Woo! You guys getting that? My trust, our trust in these last days must be solely on God. He is our help. Look at the last part of that scripture. We put our hope in the Lord, for He's our help. He's our shield. See, when everybody's freaking out in the last days, we got people full of faith in this room. We got people full of faith in perilous times. We got people full of hope. Of, you go to work smiling tomorrow. Why are you smiling? The company's going bankrupt. We got to look for a new job. I know, but God will give me a better job. I ain't like this job too much anyways. God will give me a better job. We're going bankrupt. I know, but Jesus is going to provide for me. How's he going to do it? I don't have a clue, but I believe. We're starting a church in Compton. Compton prices are insane. To rent a house over there is like 35, 4,000. Much less a building. Forget about this size. A building just 20,000 square feet. How are we going to get in those buildings? His name is Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus will provide. Jesus will provide in these last days. Jesus will provide for you in these last days. Jesus will provide for you in these last days. Jesus will provide for you in these last days. Jesus will provide for you in these last days. Give Jesus a big shout. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. 
So number one, don't panic. Don't be surprised. Here's number two, for sake of time. What's number two? Where are we at? Oh, here we go. Be a bold witness in these last days and stand for the word of God. Don't be no wimp in the last days. We got a bunch of wimps. We need some soldiers. Be a bold witness. Stand up for the statutes of God. Something is not correct. Stand up for the word. Acts chapter 14 verse 3. Therefore they stayed a long time. Speaking boldly with authority. In the Lord. They stayed there for a while. Speaking boldly. Who was bearing witness to the word of his grace. Granting signs and wonders to be done in their hands. We need a witness like we've never witnessed before until Jesus Christ comes back. Until we take our last breath, we got to get on these streets. We got to go crazy telling people about the cross. Telling people they can be forgiven. Telling people about eternal death, eternal life. Time is running out. I love this church. I wake up yesterday and first thing news, boom, we're on my phone. Came up somewhere, mass shooting in San Bernardino. Turn on the local news, and sure enough, there it was, mass shooting. Got on the phone, I said, everybody start going down there, adopt the block, go. Man, in a matter of an hour, half hour, we had like 50 people being a witness on the corner of Highland and Palm. Why did our teams run there? Because time is running out. People were crying on that corner yesterday. People were hurting in that corner yesterday. And if we go further, we heard about Ukraine and something was in my spirit. About, about three, four weeks ago, I told the team, we got to get to Poland. What are we doing? There's like five million refugees. We got to get down there. Because in the last days, this is the greatest harvest we've ever seen. This is the greatest opportunity to witness in the history of mankind. So I talked to the team. I said, I think I told Michael first or our team first, we got to get to Poland. Do we have any connections over there? Is there any churches out there? And right now, our mission team is in Poland right now. <laughs> Give it up for our mission team. Let them hear you all the way in, all the way in Poland. Who are these people? These are refugees. Over 5 million refugees have left Ukraine. Around 3 million, 3 million are in Poland alone. Maybe another one and a half in Romania. They're all over. Our team this week, you got to picture that little girl. We got to pray over a little girl that she was stuck at the border, I think for five days. She starts going into seizures. We don't know if it was a medical thing. Because I don't know about you, I, I get acid reflux really bad. Anybody get acid or heartburn? How many take pills for that? Sometimes I get acid so bad, it feels like my heart's going to explode. Anybody ever get acid like that? Any like an emergency water? Right? These people don't have medication, a lot of them. You're going to see the pictures, wives, moms, where are the dads? The dads had to stay and fight. Some of these ladies, they're expecting to see their husband when they get back or when they reunite. Some of them are not going to see their husband again. He's dead. Some of these kids are not going to see their dad. He's dead. The reports haven't got back to them yet. There's over 4,000 already have died in Ukraine that they can even number five barely. Over 4,000 already dead. There's bodies everywhere. So when we heard about this, we said time is running out. We need to spread the gospel. Get on that plane. Go speak to hurting people and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Give it up for our team over there in Poland. <laughs> handicapped, handicapped. They're hanging out in hotels, no medication, nowhere to take care of them. Our team prayed for the handicapped. People are giving their lives to Jesus in that hotel room. Give Jesus a shout of praise. 
Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Pounds and pounds of food. Why are we doing this? Bold witness in the last days. Stand for the word of God. Here's number three. Let's go a little faster for time. Let's give you a couple more. Here's number three. What's our role? What's our response in the last days? Number three. We need to make disciples of Jesus Christ as fast as we can. I got to have somebody next to me that I'm training. I thank God that I was able to be with Pastor Marco and training and training and training, training and training. You got mentors that's been training you guys. Some of you guys are still not involved in a discipleship group. I beg of you. I beg of you. After today, get on your phone. Sign up to get involved in a discipleship group. You're going to get discipled, but it's going to go further and greater. We're going to teach you how to be a disciple and how to make disciples of Jesus Christ. So you have two guys, two gals next to you. You have two couples that you're training so we can spread this gospel around the world. We're going to Compton and now I'll let the cat out of the bag. I, I, some of you guys already found out. How many know we got an Arizona church coming soon? Me, me and Veronica and the family, we will be leading the Arizona church. We'll get in more detail how that's going to play out. How's it going to play out? I don't know. Where are you going to live? I don't know. I'm looking. Is your, are your kids going 100%? My children are coming with me. Of course, yes. They might start online school so we could be flexible right now in this season. Because I want to get to Poland. I want to get to Romania. I haven't been to the Kenya. I got to go to Kenya. I want to see that. I want to have myself able to go to Mexico. Me and my wife and a family will be leading the charge over there. And why are we going to Arizona? Why are we going to Compton? Why are we in TJ's? To make disciples of Jesus Christ. To make disciples of G. Why are we starting churches? To make disciples of Jesus Christ. Why do we go on the streets? To make disciples of Jesus Christ. Why do we have all these classes here? To make disciples of Jesus Christ. Why do we get baptized? To make disciples of Jesus Christ. Why do I open up my Bible and read? To make disciples of Jesus Jesus Christ. Why do I pray till two o'clock in the morning to make disciples of Jesus Christ? Making disciples is our most important earthly assignment. If you're not making disciples currently, you're wasting time. Your grandkids need it, and discipleship starts with our house. You got a son and a daughter, disciple them. Don't let this perverse generation get a hold of your kids. Once this perverse generation gets a hold of your kids, we got to do an exorcism just to get them free. Because these last days, demons are coming out out of the woodwork. We've cast out demons simply by a kid watching YouTube for 30 seconds filled with, filled with 12, 15 demons. We'll ask the demon, how did you enter? Through YouTube. Through TikTok. Watching a simple, ignorant video and kids getting filled with multiple legion of demons. Last days. Making disciples our number one assignment. Number four, I wish I could stay on there. We got to do a whole series on discipleship. That might be the next series, Christian, I don't know. That might be the next one, making disciples. That's the key. That's, num that's it. That's why we're here. Number four. Here's your last, not the last, but one another assignment you could jot down. Live a life of holiness and purity. This is, not a, this is not a day and age to compromise. This is not a day and age to go to church right now and just, just smoke pot all night. The day of compromise needs to be over for the on fire believer. That's enough. The Bible says he's coming for a spotless, blameless church. He's coming from a, for a church that doesn't have any wrinkles. That's living holy because in the last days, the only Jesus sometimes people are going to see is going to be through your lifestyle. They're going to see that your job site. They're going to see it in your neighbor, how you live.
how you talk. We can't reach the world if we're acting just like the world. We want to go to the same movies as them. We want to talk like them. We want to use coarse joking like them. And we want to do this like them. And we want to get high every so often like them. We want to watch this porn pornographic video every so often like them. And then we want to reach them. That's impossible. I want to reach people. And how does he reach people as people see us? Ephesians 5, 27. So that in turn, he might present the church to himself a glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she would be holy holy set apart of set apart for god and blameless let's be a good example in these last days let people see jesus through your lifestyle let them ask how are you, how, how do you stay so positive how, how are you laughing while all the chaos is going on how does your marriage work man how do you do that People should be hunting and hunting us down and knocking on our doors till 2 o'clock in the morning. How do you do it? How is your family? How do you guys do that? And we just pour them to Jesus all day. Pour them to Jesus. But if we're acting just like them, we can't reach them. And guys, this church is moving at a fast pace. You know, I'm going to Arizona now. I'll be there next week. I'll be preaching there next week. I preached there last Sunday. I said, Pastor, why are you going so fast? People are dying. How, huh, Veronica? We went there last week. We just prayed and prayed and prayed for people, older people, lonely. I got a young adult, a young girl. As soon as I get there this next week, I think Friday or Saturday, she's losing her mind. Doesn't want to talk to anybody. So there's assignments there. There's assignments around your workplace. There's assignments right there in your house. Don't take it for granted, church. This is the last days. There's an urgency. If you got to call somebody, call them today. Say, hey, I got, let's, have, let's have coffee. I just want to share my faith. I want to share what God's been doing in my life. You guys got this? Let's be, let's be the church that God has called us to be in these last days. Bold, unashamed of the gospel. And I'm going to let you know right now, if you're ashamed of the gospel, Jesus will be ashamed of you when you stand before in his presence. Let's be bold. If the word of God calls it sin, you and I need to call it sin. Right? If the word of God calls it sin, you and I should call it sin. None of this stuff. Well, I don't know. Do drunkards go to hell, pastor? Drunkards? Yeah, they do. Corinthians talks about it. They get drunk all the time. They're practicing. They're going to hell. What? You really believe in a hell? I do. Hell is more real than me and you sitting here right now. You guys understand that? Stand up for the word in these last days, and we're going to win. This place right now, I'm going to tell you, it's going it's to get so packed in here. I know we got overflow. We're going to be overflow times, overflow times, overflow. Because when Jesus begins to move in our jobs, our cities, get ready for the greatest move of God. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. I love him. How many in love with Jesus? How many in love with the king? He is good. He's going to see us through in these last days. Now, in a moment, we're going to stand up and we're going to have, to have a time of prayer. There's a few people moving right now, some of our workers. For the ones that don't have to go to work, just hang out for a few. We're almost done. But this is a part we come in our service that we want to give you some time. We want to pray with you. You're going to see in a moment, we're going to have a bunch of workers up here. I like to call them prayer coaches. They're here to help coach you in life coach you in the word whatever you're going through don't leave here without getting prayer get some prayer you might be saying i already prayed at home and i understand that but the bible says this when two people agree it shall be established okay you might just be one establishment away an agreement from everything to start turning around in the right direction so in a moment you could come up for prayer job finances sickness your business, you're struggling right now, you don't know what to do, you're thinking maybe, I'm talking a lot of business owners because of the economy, they might be shifting their business a whole nother way. Make sure you hear from God, let's agree, let's get some wisdom together. But here's the last thing. All the way from this section, all the way to the back, all the way over here, I want to make sure that you're going to heaven. This was a great message on the end times, great, but if you don't receive Christ, that's the main reason why we're here, because of you right now. 
Jesus is coming back soon, but let's even talk about more reality. Your life is not guaranteed tomorrow. The shooting that happened in San Bernardino, I think it was a teenager that died, right? Was it a teenager, 18-year-old? Was that the one that got shot? 20-year-old. He's on to eternity. He's gone. Those people at the supermarket just minding their own business, shopping. This demon-possessed man goes in there. You guys, life's not promised tomorrow. Take this moment very serious. Don't leave this building. Don't leave this campus without making sure you're right with God. Don't play Russian roulette with your life. Don't do that. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. It's not tomorrow. It's not next month. It's now. Today is your day to get right with God. So if you're in this room, I want everyone to stand up. Everyone to stand up for a second. You're in this room right now. You're saying, Pastor, that's me. I need God. I want him to forgive me of all my sins. Pastor, I'm backslidden. I've been running from God. Man, I'm so happy you made it today. Jesus and the angels, they're, they're throwing a party for you right now in heaven. They're saying, look, she made it back. Look, he made it back. Father, look, they're there. They made it back to the house. They're in the house. They made it. So I'm going to count to three. If you say, Pastor, that's me. I've been backslidden. I've been running from God. But I want to recommit myself today. I want to get a fresh start today. I want to kind of hit like that reset button. I just want to reset for me and my family. Or if you're saying, Pastor, I've never received Christ. I've never asked him to come into my heart. This is your invitation. There's two locations when we die, heaven, hell. There's no purgatory. You might, you might have been taught in another church religion. There's purgatory where you die and your soul will go around for a couple of years. That's not in the Bible. That's nowhere found in the Bible. That's false teaching. That's false teaching. No such thing. The Mormons will do that. A lot of religions will do that. No such thing as that in the Bible, you guys. Not true. When we die, it's heaven or hell. That's it. Well, how do I get to heaven? Real simple. It's not about a church. How do we get to heaven? Only one way. We put our faith in Jesus. We put our faith on what he did on the cross. If I told you right now, only way to get to heaven, you got to be a member of the way. Man, run out of this place as far as you can. And tell everybody, that guy is nuts over there on Hallmark Avenue. Church doesn't save you. Religion doesn't save you. You're not going to die and they're going to open up a book and do this. Are you a Baptist? Oh my gosh, all the Baptists go. No such thing. We make up all these religions here on earth. Nowhere in the Bible this. Are you a Pentecostal? Oh yeah, right? All the Pentecostals go. Are you a Presbyterian? All the Presbyterians go. Are you a Catholic? All the Catholic. Whoa, go, go, go. No. That's all man-made stuff here. The only one that can save us the only way to the father jesus said i am the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the father except through me jesus is the way the truth and the life so here it goes pastor i need to be forgiven of all my sins i want to make sure i'm right with god man i've been backslidden i want to hit the reset button today I want to come back to, I want to surrender everything to God. That's me. When I count to three, raise your hands all across this auditorium. One, don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is you and God. Don't let nothing hold your hand down. You want to be forgiven. You want to go to heaven. You want to get right with God. You want to hit the reset button. You want to come back. Raise your hand when I say three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them. Raise them. Raise them. Raise up. I see hands all over the auditorium. Raise them. You're at home. Raise them. You're in the hospital bed. God is seeing you right there. He's going to touch you in the hospital bed. Yes. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come meet me here in the front, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer today. 
to dedicate your life to Jesus Christ. Come on down. All those, even if you didn't raise your hands, come. more leaders up here we have a bunch of people right now that's not being taken care of any leaders dg leaders we got a whole bunch there's at least 10 15 on this side you got another 10 here there's nobody in front of them any leaders come and help us you got another one two three four five guys right here nobody's helping them come on down leaders we need help we need help we need help got one there maybe head that way any leaders just head that way there's a big group right now Say, Pastor, why are you getting somebody next to him? Because right after we pray, this is barely the beginning. It's barely the beginning. You're going to say a prayer for Jesus to save you. But after that, now you need discipleship. You need to get baptized. The Bible says, repent and be baptized. So your next step, we're going to help you get baptized. Like you've seen those people up here. You're going to get baptized right away. But then you're going to be taught the word of God. We're going to train you. So you can train somebody else. There you go. We got it. We have coverage. We got it. Albert over there. You got some over there? Good. Thank you. Thanks for helping out, you guys. Thank you. Every head bow, every eyes closed. taking my time but there's a few more people just they're still settling in their, in their in their spirit right now somebody's gonna get saved at their seat right now somebody in a moment they're gonna get filled with the holy spirit just at their seat the holy spirit's gonna hit them every head by every eyes close we have coverage here coverage good job leaders thank you thank you for filling in the gaps every head by every eyes close Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a child of God. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill me. Jesus, set me free from all my bad habits all my addictions thank you jesus for dying on the cross i receive salvation i am born again i'm a new person starting today in jesus name i pray amen if you just said that prayer welcome to the family of god you are now a child of god you are a son and daughter of God. If anybody needs additional prayer, come on down. 1.30, one hour, we got membership. 1.30, lunch will be provided. If you're saying, Pastor, this is my church, come out with us at 1.30, one hour. We'll have lunch for you. We'll be in the South Hall. I would love to meet you. I'll be there for membership today. We love you guys, 1.30, 1.30 membership. Have a great day. You need prayer, come on down.